I am Olivier Gérard. I'm an ergonomist and posture therapist, author of the posture manual and creator of the 10 weeks online back saving program. Um, it's Saturday here and we all had a busy week or a time. And you know, I thought I will share with you a typical exercise session that I sell to my B2B clients. I'm thinking of a big pharma company in particular that asks me to organize on a weekly session, uh, exercising sessions for their employees working from home for two reasons. And one, because it gives them an opportunity to be together. Two, because it's, um, it's a great way to relax their back and muscles and things. The way we will organize this session is that we will look at four regions. When you uh, are an office worker, what tends to happen is that your lower back gets compressed. That's number one. Your spine will get stiff. Your mid back will go round, you know, shoulders forward and head forward, and you'll have neck strain and so on. So these are the four regions um, I, I will tackle a bit. Eh? Lower back, spine as a whole, the upper body tending round shoulders and things, and the rest, neck and arms. So let's start, you know, we will do, like follow along, you know, so just bear with me and do the exercises along with me. So you're on your chair, yeah, and it's time to take a break. The first thing we're going to do to take a break, and that is stretching your lower back, is your flex your chin forward. And just go like this, you know, rest your shoulders on your knees, and thereby you stretch your lower back. You shouldn't cause any pain to yourself, you know. Uh, if you just had, say, a disc or knee or something, take it easy. But, you know, just stretch your back. And to go back, you will put your lower belly inside and inhale. And we back. To the sitting pose. We do the other side, fine, we do the same thing, but I just show you from the other side. Look, chin in and you roll forward. Yeah, here you're stretching your lower back, i.e., decompressing it. It doesn't need to last for long. And what I'm going to show you now is a trick that will actually allow you to, um, to get out of the chair. Look, now your buttocks are light, yeah, because your torso is not on top of them. So you just Push on your legs, and here you are standing, belly in, and you stand up. So actually, what I just showed you is a very simple way to stretch your back every time you stand up and sit down. Look, sit down, yeah, and now stand up. That's it. Okay, so here we are, and now we have, say, decompressed the lower back. I will show you. And now there's a video on the channel which is regarding the quadratus lumborum. It's this side muscle here. I will show you how to target it specifically in the relaxation. Now the relaxation includes this exercise. Yeah? And that is per se already stretching all the back muscles. But to target them more, as some of you tend to turn their pelvis, we will lock the pelvis. Look, I'm going to bend my knees like this and just do the relaxation like that. And thereby, you're really working on your quadratus lumborum in particular and your lower back muscles. And relax now. Very good. So now we've really been working on, say, decompressing your lower back, making it move a bit. I hope you feel OK. What we will do is we will do a sideways stretch which you know from the channel also, if you have been following a few of my videos. So look, bear with me, we're going to do that. We're going to have the forward, yeah? And as left is forward, we will actually rotate to the left side and flex forward, and thereby we're stretching here. It's important that your feet are flat on the ground. You see that you really have your heels on the ground, and you feel the stretch in your lower back here. All this that I'm showing you here is meant to be office compatible. You know, on another session, I'll show you what you can do at home uh, because that includes exercises on the floor and things. But when you're at work, you know, in an open space or something, it's not very easy to be on all fours in the middle of your colleagues. So now I'm showing you things which are, yeah, more discreet and that you can do in the bathroom and things. Other side, right leg forward. Both feet flat on the ground, rotate to the right, and flex, stretch the quadratus lumborum. 
At this stage, you can actually use what's called post-isometric relaxation, which is inhale, resist gravity, exhale, let go. Inhale, exhale, and so on. Ideally, a stretch is kept, well, we say one minute, but actually what matters is at least 40 seconds. But you know, we say one minute for, uh, for you to stay actually 40 seconds. All right, great. Okay, now we're gonna stretch the, so we have been working, I mean, it's never enough uh, what we do on the spine, but we've been working quite a bit on the spine. So let's switch to the upper body. As we said, your upper body wants to go round like this. So we have to stretch the muscles that pull your shoulders forward and reinforce the muscles that want to bring your shoulder down and together. Now we'll show you one exercise for each. Just let me bring the cam a tiny, tiny bit higher. Okay? So this is the stretch of the serratus anterior, which is actually, I think, the most viewed video on my channel. So you have your fist on your, on, on, on your belt like this, and we're going to go lean on the wall or on the shelf or something, you know, and I'm just going to transfer my weight so that actually the elbow is, the elbow is pulled back, and this is stretching this side muscle here. Yeah, so the exercise is this. Just using the shelf and weight transfer to pull my elbow back. What's important is that you make sure that your shoulder is not raised too much and that your pelvis is pushed backwards. So here I feel stretching. If you have any question, by the way, feel free to ask and I see in the chat that something just happened, I'm going to be uh, in front of the computer in a second, just to make sure what you, what you told me between before, before I stretch the two sides. Hey, hey from Singapore, I, I mean, I'm in Switzerland here. Okay, we stretch the other side. Look, yeah, right elbow here, and we go. And tell me, how's it going in Singapore? Also locked uh, at home, I guess. And you stretch the right side. So you see, basically, before I move to the next exercise, we're always working to reopen here and reinforce there. Yeah. <laughs> So do this exercise if you're working from home. So now that was really about, you know, stretching this exercise for avoiding that your shoulders move forward. And what I'm going to show you is how to anchor your shoulder blades now, working on your lower trapezius. There are at least five ways or five ways I know to activate it. Look, I'm going to put my thumbs on the shoulders. And first thing you're going to do is pull your elbows back and then bring them against your body. And you'll hold it here. Uh, well, you know, cracking your spine, once we're talking about this, it's Sammy's question in the chat. Um, cracking your spine is two different things, you know. Cracking your spine can happen. What you shouldn't do is make it happen. Because um, when it happens, well, so be it, you know. But when you make it happen, one thing is you can actually um, increase the joint mobility or actually... Um, work too much on a joint that is hypermobile and you don't want to mess up a joint that is hypermobile. Now when you go to a manual therapist, relax, when you go to a manual therapist, he can unlock one vertebra here and not there in this direction but not in that other. If someone takes you in your feet and pulls on your spine, something will crack but you don't know where and as you don't know where, it might be right the place that you shouldn't have cracked. So you know, I would say, if cracking happens, so be it, but don't make it your goal to crack your spine. That wouldn't be a good idea. That was one exercise. I'm switching, you see. <laughs> that was one exercise to open your, your chest. I'm just going to show you another one, which is quite effective. You will hold your face like this, like if you would you know, hold the steering of a bike and you imagine you have a big balloon here. Now you press on the balloon. Zack! Yeah? And that is also activating 
your lower trapezius, provided that your pelvis is not far in front of you, but is actually at the back behind there. And you hold it, but make sure that your fingers are kind of locked. You're welcome and a pleasure. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me all of you. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually creating tension here in my mid back to bring my shoulder blades like this. And by the way, you know, speaking about there's a video on this, but the question comes back regularly. When you have shoulders forward, like most of us, like most of people nowadays due to smartphones and things, what posture correctors will do is they will pull your shoulders back like this, you know? And bringing your shoulder blades like this is actually using your rhomboids, you know, which creates a lot of strain in your upper neck. So you see, when I want a correct round shoulder posture, I'm not doing this. When I want a correct round shoulder posture, I do that. And it's a totally different thing. So, you know, one way or the other, I don't know any posture corrector that does this properly, which is reason number one for not buying a posture corrector, but for learning how to use the lower trapezius. And actually, if you use the lower trapezius, um, a posture corrector, you know, it's like using an exoskeleton. It makes your muscles lazy. So really, really believe me. I mean, if you need help on correcting your posture, you give me a ring or a mail or a comment or something, and I'll help you correct your posture. But don't go for the lazy solution because lazy solutions have always many side effects. So if I recap what we've done in this exercise session, we have stretched the lower back. We have mobilized the quadratus lumbarum, which was here. We have then stretched the quadratus lumbarum. And then I said, OK, look, problem is that we have round shoulders. So we have stretched these muscles that participate in pulling the shoulders forward. They are called serratus anterior. And we have reinforced the antagonists, which are like this, which are the lower trapezius. Okay? Now, from what I have seen in the exercise sessions with my clients, they also like neck exercises. So as it's Saturday, and we I'm free this afternoon, I want to show you the three ways to mobilize all your, all your cervical vertebrae. This is crazy value, you know, it's, it's not something that I give away for free now, but uh, it's soon Christmas and I really enjoy this session with you guys. So let's go. The first exercise we're gonna do together is we're gonna mobilize all your cervical spine, all together. Please just make sure that you don't hurt yourself, just do things slowly, yeah? I'm gonna come back to your uh, comment in a second, um, I mean, I'm just uh, showing the first exercise with the cervical spine. So we turn the chin to the left, and then look, I will draw a semicircle on my chest. So forward like this, and then I go horizontally to the other side. Down, and left. Down, and left. Down, and left. And then we do the other direction. And then I take a miss question before I show you the exercise for the upper cervicals. Slowly, eh? it's a neck, so you don't want to go too fast. Eh? I'll let you do a few more turns once I read them in question. I struggle with regular, regular pain on neck and shoulder, almost always on the right side, specific spots in the upper neck just before the head and the part of the shoulder. Well, on the back side of the shoulder, is it pain like this? I mean, like kind of going like this. You know, if you have pain on one side only, you have to question what you do on, on this side more than on the other. And most people being right-handed, what usually is specific to the right side is the mouse. So, you know, we have heavy mouse users we tend to have more pain here, especially if the mouse runs away. So there, I really advise that you have a look at the, okay, where the shoulder connect with the arm. So that would be more around here. At the back, you say. Yeah. Just finishing my sentence on the, uh, on, on, on the thing. Uh, the, um, so we have to interrogate what you do with, um, with, with the mouse. If the pain is here at the back, this is less um, common pain. I just want to check 
that it, so that I'm sure I'm not I'm not saying something stupid. Just wait a sec. Um, you see, I, I often use this uh, this book when I'm not too sure. Um, back of shoulder pain. That's part three. It's the trigger point manual that I'm using now. You can actually find its content on um, triggerpoints.net. Back of shoulder pain. Yeah, it's what I thought. Well, usually when you have pain like this, you have to uh, try and see if you can do this exercise. And well, can you try and let us know if you can do that? Then I show the exercise for the upper cervicals and I switch back to your question once you do the test, yeah? So look, exercise for the upper cervicals. Nose we turn the head to the right, and when you exhale, you bring your chin down. So, and down, and back, and say, and back to the middle. When you go back to the middle, you don't want to go too far back because you don't want to hollow your neck, okay? Like this. And we go back again. This exercise for the upper cervical is typically, you know, when you lean forward or forward on your elbows, your line of sight is going down and you correct your line of sight, exactly killing your upper neck. So this will be typical on people who work forward like this with their skin too high or people who have no bifocal glasses. So this last exercise I showed you was for the upper cervical vertebra. Back to Armin's question on pain shear and things, I would really investigate the, 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 the muscles that attach here, uh, especially if you work behind the computer a lot. I mean, one uh, useful test is how well do you manage to raise your arm, especially when you do that against the resistance, uh, you know, like I do uh, here against the, the, the cable. If that is painful, uh, well, let me know. And, and I will... Uh, uh, I, I will tell you what it is after I show the exercise for the um, for the lower cervical vertebra. So do this test of bringing your elbows sideways against resistance. Tell me how you feel, and then I reconnect with your question. So look now, exercise for the lower cervical vertebra. You're going to bring your arms 45 degrees to the side. One, the two palms are facing down. You spread your fingers, yeah. And we will bring one um, hand, palms facing the ceiling. And during the whole exercise now, we're just going to look at the palm facing the ground. And look. Once you turn your head, you turn your arms at the same time. This is an exercise to mobilize the lower cervical vertebrae, which is particularly useful for people who work a lot on small screens because deep neck flexion is typically causing this kind of, of uh, say, pain in the lower neck. Oh, and we have now I mean with the positive test to what I was doing, which is this. Yeah. So as I have showed you a number of exercises that I wanted to show you. Sorry, Cam is get, getting blurry, good knows why. Um, let me take, take Amin's question. I'm just trying to reconnect the cam. I'm sorry. Um, and for that, let, let's, let's talk about that does this. This muscle is called supraspinatus, yeah? And it goes basically uh, here, under, the arch, the bony arch here, and attaches to the top of the humerus. So basically, when you raise your arm like this, you will pinch the, the tendon of this muscle, and that creates a lot of pain. When people have pain like this, there are three things we need to monitor. One is everything that they do with the elbow too far to the side. That includes the mouse too far to the side, um, in particular, if you do office work. But I have this also a lot in the watchmaking industry. You know, in the watchmaking industry, if you look at watchmakers, they all work like this all day long. So this is a typical pain for watchmakers also. Second factor 
we need to look at is every pressure on the tendon of the supraspinatus that is going to come from below. And that can come from below simply because I lean on my elbow. And of course, I can lean on my elbow whilst my elbow is spread to the side. You know? I mean, it's not one or the other. It can be both. When you lean on your elbow here, it means that you need your elbow to stabilize your posture. If you need your elbow to stabilize your posture, it's because your posture is not stable somewhere else. Where should it be somewhere else stable? Well, typically in your lower back, like this. And the third, um, I'm coming to that. And the third thing that we need to do is um, and that you need to be aware is everything that you hold like this, like your shopping bag, which will also create a pull on the tendon. So these are the three things we need to monitor if if you have pain in the um, supraspinatus. Now, regarding the clacks and the noises and the sh things in the shoulder, well, then we need to talk about the shoulder a bit more in detail. The shoulder is a fascinating joint because it is, uh, it is the most mobile joint in your whole body, you see? But the most mobile means the most unstable. So as soon as something goes wrong with the shoulder, tick, 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 it's like a chain reaction. And the cracks can have therefore two origins. One is kind of soft tissues like tendons going like this. This is especially the case if you have a repetitive clack in your shoulder. The other type of clack you can have is a joint clack, which is usually a one-time thing and then it stops. You know, this is, this is I mean, if, if an orthopedic surgeon would be listening to this, I mean, you would find it oversimplistic. But we, when, we're not trying to, to have a new, um, an orthopedic consultation here. We're trying to um, think in big lines about the issues. One way or the other, what's extremely important is to um, relax the joint and preserve the joint mobility without imposing weight on it. So, you know, if I go like this against gravity, yeah, of course, I'm preserving joint mobility, but that's at a high price because there's a lot of tension in my shoulder. So a better way to um, preserve joint mobility is that, you know, when I'm here, I also have my arm at ear level. So it's actually the same position as that. It's the same. But I'm not asking anything from my shoulder. So this is much more relaxed. And when you're here, well, you do the movements, you know, north, south, south then east, west, then circles, and all that. So basically, I mean, the, 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 the strategy that you should have is a two-fold strategy. One strategy is remove the causal factors that I showed you, which are this, that, and holding something here. Two, preserve the mobility of the shoulder by extremely frequent relaxation, especially relaxation bending forward like that. Yeah? And your goal for the next two weeks should be to do this type of exercises 10 times per day. That means one time per hour. And if after two weeks there's no evolution, then you need to do, go to someone who, unlike me, can touch your shoulder, can look at your shoulder, can look at everything. And what you can do, though, is come back to me with the diagnosis, with his opinion, so that we can discuss it together. And by discussing it together, I will be able to coach you on specific measures that you need to take at work. But at the distance, the, um, say, the diagnosis I can make is, is a bit limited. So I give you the generic advice here. And the, 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 and, and the rest, if my advice is not sufficient, should be dealt with by someone who sees you physically and with whom I can work together with proper coordination. Do we have any question from, uh, from anyone else, wherever you are? On, uh, well, if you're working from home, if you have any specific issue, if you have anything else? Nothing special. What I suggest is that we end this session with the full relaxation routine uh, that, well, that I mean, should do 10, 10 times a day. So, I mean, let's go for your first routine or relaxation routine of the day. You have nine more times afterwards, yeah? 
<laughs> so we start shaking the wrist like this. Yeah, that's flexion extension. Then we throw the thumbs. And then we'll work on the elbows. You see, I'm really just isolating the elbow and in a very loose way and moving the joint. Then we go to shoulder level. So, I mean, you, go, you stay there only within your comfortable um, range of motion. Thanks for reaching out on Facebook. I mean, that's cool. And now we will activate the neck, so the cervical vertebrae. And now you're going to go with the whole back, yeah? So look, whole back. And what we're now going to do is we're going to put the chin between the collarbones and gently flex down one vertebra after the other. You stay within your comfortable zone, yeah? The lower you go, the more you work on your lumbar area, but you don't need to go too low. And this routine just took us approximately 40 seconds. There is a shorter version even, look, which is five seconds. We're just going to shake the clavicula, the collarbones. Yeah, so that's relaxing the whole upper body. And five seconds, we do the spiral movement like this. The thing is, when we have a 10 second routine, like I just showed you, to relax, well, to reset basically the, the whole tension in the upper body, now, if you do that one, the last one I've been doing now, 10 seconds, if you do that every 20 minutes, that will amount to 30 seconds per hour, which is four minutes per working day. So, you know, not only it does not take you time, we all have four minutes. I mean, let's be serious. We all have four minutes. But it will also be extremely effective because basically muscle tension is like an exponential. And if you manage to kill muscle tension before it takes the exponential, then you're safe. But if you try to, to, to reduce it when it's up there, hey, good luck, my friend, and you know, good luck. Because, uh, well, there are some studies, for example, that show that if you have pain in your back for like 30 minutes in a row, you'll need to wait until tomorrow after a good night's sleep for the pain to be, to be gone. So you know, you don't want pain, if I muscle tension to take the exponential, and the only way for it not to take the exponential is to have a very short routine that you can practice extremely frequently so as to um, not let the, the tension on your body. So again, that was five seconds. I shake my shoulders and five seconds like this. All right, my friends. Well, I'm more or less at the end of what I had foreseen to, to tell you. But if there's any urgent question, well, feel free to put it in the chat. I will uh, read it with pleasure. Um, I have maybe one request, if you're, uh, if you're um, interested, is put in the comments, I will publish this video, yeah? And put in the comments which part you liked and what you'd like me to discuss um, to, 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 to discuss next time. You know, there are many things that we can uh, talk about in terms of posture, because posture is what you do with your body 24-7. But I really want to bring you what's most valuable to you. So, you know, let me know in the comments. And if we have no further question, I will uh, wish you a very beautiful Saturday and, and a very nice rest of the weekend. You take care and let me know in the comments how you felt about this session and what we could do in the next ones. Bye-bye. Take care.